Let's talk about our bodies today because I know the conventional wisdom is you peak when you're young and then it's all downhill from there. But I'm not sure if it's as simple as that. Hey guys, I'm Badminton Becky. If this is your first time here, I'm an American living and playing badminton in China. Please hit the subscribe button and follow along as I talk about all things badminton and try to be a top player in my city. I hope you can hear me. There's like a car alarm, my coach is yelling, kids are screaming. <laughs> hope you can hear me. Okay, I moved. Hopefully this is a little quieter. Obviously with biology, we do physically peak as humans in our 20s and we do get weaker as we get older. Professional badminton players, of course, they start when they're young and they peak in their 20s and then they retire in late 20s, early 30s. Some amazing players, you know, Lee Chong Wei, Lin Dan, their peak is for much longer. They sustain a longer peak. And I think as we increase our knowledge of fitness, nutrition and recovery and workouts that we will find that professional athletes, their peaks are getting longer and longer and they can retire later. But you know, you get in your mid thirties, you're old in the professional athlete world. But I'm talking about non-professionals. I'm talking about people like me and you, like people that just love badminton and wanna play our whole lives. And we wanna play the best we can at the highest level we can our whole entire life. The problem is our bodies do change. Inevitably, we get older, we have injuries, our bodies get fatter, skinner, weaker, stronger. It's not just like we peak in our 20s and then it's all downhill. I mean, I'm in my 40s and I'm more physically fit than I was in my 20s because in my 20s, I never played a sport and I never did exercise and now I do it a lot. So our bodies are constantly in flux. They're up and down and up and down and we can't just rely on that like old outdated model. But I think to keep us in peak playing condition, we have to not only understand where where our body is at at a specific time in life but we have to understand like how to maximize our potential at each different stage like right now i'm dealing with my sickness i know you're probably tired of me talking about it but i'm very weak i have a lot of limitations right now of with playing and training but it doesn't mean i want to stop playing <laughs> just because i'm in the hospital every couple weeks doesn't mean I want to stop playing badminton. And if you think I'm crazy for playing badminton and I should just like take a rest for half a year or a year, you're crazy and you don't love badminton like I do. Cause if you love badminton like I do, you understand. And despite me being sick and in the hospital a lot, I have done the best in competitions in the highest level competitions that I've done in my entire badminton career. I got second place in a game against pro players and a few weeks ago, me and my coach, we got fifth place in a provincial wide large competition. So even though I am sick and weak and I can't play to what I know is my best ability right now, I'm trying to figure out how can I play to my highest potential of what my body can do. So for me at this stage of my life, it's the front of the net. I'm a strong girl. Um, I have always been a strong girl and I hate when people think mixed doubles is woman in the front, man in the back. That is not how mixed doubles is played. That is how low level mixed doubles is play. That is how beginner level mixed doubles is play. That is how guys who don't know how to play mixed doubles think mixed doubles is played. Yes, the man takes the majority of the back, the woman takes the majority of the front, but defense, they're side to side. And many times the woman has to go to the back to cover the court. I once had a game where a guy said, I get the whole back you get the whole front. And I just laughed at him and I said, oh, okay, so you don't know how to play badminton. <laughs> and I could go off on a rant about this for 10 minutes, but I won't. <laughs> now that my body has limitations, I can't really go back. I don't have the strength or the energy to move around the court. So these days, unfortunately, it's kind of killing me, but I do have to stay in the front. If I can stay in the front, I can play and we can win. It's like that competition where we got second place in the professional players group. It's because I recognize my limitations and I didn't try to, I didn't try to push myself physically because I knew I couldn't do it. And I had an amazing partner and he could do it. So I recognized my limitations and I used it to kind of benefit our play instead of hurting our play. But you know, it's not just sickness and, and weakness of the body, there's things like injuries. You know, maybe you are a smash player and your smash is amazing and you rely on your smash. 
well, what happens if you start getting some tennis elbow or your shoulder starts to hurt? Not bad enough that you have to take a break, not bad enough you have to go to the doctor, but suddenly your smashes don't have the power, your arm doesn't have the strength that it used to, it's much weaker. Instead of lamenting that, oh, I have this injury and oh, I'm playing so bad now, I think it's important to figure out how you can play using your limitations. What I see a lot is guys in their 30s and 40s, and they talk about how bad they are and what's the point of competing anymore and what's the point of playing badminton anymore because they can't keep up and they're old and they're slow and they're weak because they're comparing themselves to the 20 year olds that are playing and they're comparing themselves to their former 20 year old self. And they don't even realize, like in their age group, they're still getting first and second place in competitions. They just can't beat the first place winner of the 20 year old age group. So they get really depressed and kind of dejected and they don't want to continue playing or competing because they feel like they can't keep up with their old selves. But if there's a competition with multiple age groups and an older age group, like 60 to 70, I actually really like to watch the 60 to 70 year olds because that's where we're headed. You know, we can watch young people and we can really admire their game, but we are headed towards the older age brackets. None of us are going backwards. It's really important, I think, for us to look ahead and see what are people older than us, how are they playing, and therefore, what do I need to do as I get older to improve myself and make sure that I am the best 50-year-old, I am the best 60-year-old? And I think I've talked about Lao Zhang Ge. He's uh, the worker here. He is in his 70s and he's been playing badminton for 40 years. And I really admire him. And he always wins competitions. He is overweight. He kind of hobbles around. He is definitely not a fit guy. And the interesting thing about Lao Zhang Ge is when I'm training, he always comes and watches. He pays attention to especially women players because Women, we can't rely on our strength and speed like guys do. So we have to really work on technique and we have to really work on precision of our shots. And I realized that Lao Zhang Ge, he knows he's getting old and he can't rely on his strength and speed. So now he's working on his precision and that's why he learns from women because that's what we focus on more in training in general. So I think Lao Zhang Ge is actually like really inspiring because he's not bemoaning his youth. He's not saying, oh, I suck, I'm so bad. He's using what he has to the best of his ability. So I think as you get older or you deal with injury or sickness, you can't fool yourself and say like, oh, just wait till I get better. Or just, if only I could get stronger. If I could start doing CrossFit, I'll be fast and strong again. I think we have to accept the positions in our lives and the way our body changes, but we can optimize that. We don't have to accept it as we're going to lose and we're going to have to be weak and poor. We can accept it as, okay, I can't rely on my smash anymore. Okay, time to focus on drops, time to really focus on placement, time to focus on the lines, getting it like right on the line all the time. That's how we can change ourselves so that even if our body changes, we can play the game at like the top of our level, like amateur level. We can play it so that we can always kind of stay at the top or increase yourself if you're not at the top yet to people in your age bracket. And as I'm dealing with my sickness, you know, I definitely feel limited. And if I was sick for maybe just a short time, I would just say, okay, you know, as soon as I get back to health, I'll be back to my old ways. But now that it's been like eight freaking months of the same thing, so I know that right now I can't do a lot of running around. I can't focus on my footwork and like footwork, what footwork? You can't even see that my footwork's gotten worse because I don't even move during a game. But I've accepted that and as a result, like I'm playing with my partner in a very specific way. Of course, my partners all know my health problem. So we managed to do it and we managed to win. Even with my coach and me and my coach, we play together really poorly. We got fifth place, you know, we beat more than half the people at this competition, at this provincial level competition. While I was sick, I was actually in the hospital two days after that competition. <laughs> so I guess it's play smarter, not harder. <laughs> Optimize what you have. Don't harp on what you're missing and don't harp on what's getting worse. Like optimize what you have. And I think that's the way 
as amateur players who want to continue playing for the rest of their life, hopefully in their 70s and above, that's the way we could keep playing at the top of our game at each different age, through injury, through illness, through body changes. That's what I think. What do you think? Have you gone through some physical changes? Maybe like women, have you had a baby? I really assume that your playing does change after you have a, a baby because your body changes after you have a baby. Or have you dealt with sickness or injury and you've had to learn to play a different way to continue your growth and your improvement in the sport of badminton? I am definitely very curious. So let me know in the comments below. And as for me, you know, I'll just keep dealing with what I'm dealing with. And even if I wasn't dealing with illness, I'd still be dealing with age so we all have to kind of be vigilant as we continue our badminton journeys and we have to pay attention to our body and we have to try to push ourselves but not push ourselves in ways that we can't do it you have to kind of understand yourself because we all want to play optimally we all want to win competitions I think we can do it I think we can't just say oh, I'm not 25 anymore I think that's not a valid excuse in this day and age because we can do it Thank you.